This is Awkward Occurrence for Awkward Entertainment. So we're going to be getting into two Rose Davis interviews. And we're going to break down her body language. Now before we do that, Rose Davis, TikTok, and Instagram are now private. Now I don't know why she sent her, put her Instagram on private. But on her TikTok, when you try to follow her TikTok, this is the message you get. This account was reported for multiple community guideline violations. And that happens when a bunch of people, or this happened because a bunch of people reported her videos when there really weren't any type of violations in them. Because when you log on to TikTok sometimes, they'll put a bunch of half-naked women in your face dancing or doing something stupid, but those videos don't get taken down. I'm pretty sure they get mass reported, but TikTok won't take them down. So that's how that goes on TikTok and their censorship. But let's get into this video. Yeah, there's a bunch of people who don't want to see her TikTok up, report her videos. And TikTok take forever to appeal your video. Sometimes they'll take a day or a couple hours to appeal your video. Or they'll take weeks. Because I still have videos in the appeal process. And it's been three weeks. And they're still not restored. No word from TikTok. So. Alright, this is a woman stating Rose Davis has made $96,000 on a GoFundMe for Gabby Petito. So the GoFundMe is to help find Gabby Petito and the GoFundMe is still um, drawing money in. The goal is 100K, but it's probably at that as we speak right now. Um, I'm hoping Rose Davis sends that money to the Gabby Petito Foundation her parents set up for her. But we will see what Miss Davis does with all that money. We will see because it's under her name. So let's continue. Um, uh, roughly two years ago, um, I got a message on a Bumble from fr for friends, and it uh, She's so cool. I want to be your friend. Can we be friends? And I was like, of course. And from there, we started hanging out every day and it's kind of weird to say I met her on Bumble for Friends. People always laughed at us for that. Uh, but hey, glad she came into my life. And, and how was your friendship? What did you do? Well, our famous thing was this ice cream shop that unfortunately I just found out yesterday closed down. Um, but that was our first go-to and then other than that we were pretty like just kind of chilling all the time. So, so far right now, she just keeps looking to the left, um, thinking about what she's going to say or trying to recall memories. But let's continue. Time, you know, just hanging out and talking and she came everywhere with me. We, uh, we joked around and said she was my, uh, 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 uh what do we call her, uh, emotional uh, service human now i hear people say this is not a genuine um expression of sadness or grief it's force that's what people would say because she's not actually shedding a tear and she's just making herself seem sad but let's continue because <laughs> everywhere she went just to like just always cheering me up you know and, and how soon after you first met her did you cry? Um, it was about the second time we hung out. I went over to her house, either second or third time, and he was hanging out there, and yeah, that's when I first met him. And what was their relationship? Or what is their relationship? Thank you. Um, on the outside, it's, he's very charismatic, so it seems very loving, and there's no doubt in my mind that she, she loves him. And so she's looked down, looks down, thinking, looks back up, thinking, talks, looks down, thinking, looks back up, talking, looks down again, thinking. 
I know that, and from how I've always seen it, he loves her. Um, of course, like any relationship, there was arguments, and she come stay at my house when there was arguments just to, like, get away from it, you know, and I didn't ask most questions, because if she wanted to tell me, she could tell me, you know. Um, How many times did she come and stay with you? I couldn't give a number, but I mean... I call that a jackal smile. Just an evil jackal. Just a jackal smile. Remind me of a jackal. This is it's not um it's not genuine. Let's continue. Within the first year, I mean, I want to say at least seven to ten times. And you see when she puts her head up and then kind of puffs puffs her cheek, puff her cheek out, as if she's trying to hold back emotions. Yeah, I know. Let's continue. Um, well, we stopped it in a good place. She's closing her eyes as she's talking, so that indicates something. Do you remember any one particular incident that you... And some people say when you close your eyes while talking, you're lying. But let's continue. Yeah, I said Yeah, well, we were supposed to go line dancing on those ladies' night. And her drive is about 30 minutes to me. And halfway there, she realized her uh, ID was missing. And so it caused a really big argument because Brian just didn't want her to go out. And it was a jealousy issue. And um, it caused a huge argument between them. And she came over and... Yeah, she's looking away while telling this story. She's just peering off. To her left at whatever telling this story looking down you know as if she's pulling it, this story out of thin air but let's continue cried and just talked to me about what happened and told me all that all right she's smiling when she's describing a horrible event it's not a horrible event but she had a miss petito had an argument with brian Came over to Rose Davis' house. She was crying, telling her what happened. And right here, Miss Davis just smiles while telling this story. As if it's a good time. As if that was a good time. Miss Petito coming to her crying about... Issues with Brian Laundry, but let's continue. That's the wrong emotion to show when you speak of your friend being sad coming to your house. That's the wrong emotion to show. She was comfortable telling me. Did you feel that their relationship was getting more problematic? I do believe that their relationship, as mm -hmm. they kept going on, was getting a little, well, yeah, problematic. I mean, just seemed like there was more and more arguments and everything she did, I feel like, you know, he thought was wrong. And even as she said in the body camp, he didn't even support her with her blog, which that's not what a fiance or boyfriend does. They support you with anything you want to do. And that in itself, you know, made me feel like it just continued to get worse. Brian is not talking to I just wish him and his family would realize how serious it is and looks down continues to look down and, and think I would about really something just to say it if he would speak up and he, and he gets saw into, her last um, if he says something he has more to information be sad. She gets even just one little to thing to be gives a place to start So she switches her emotion, um, if knows then goes back to being stale face. Thinks they have any information? Please, please say something. It, that's we're relying on you to say something. That's all we can do right now is hope that people say something. I want to find my friend. So 
So there was a cut in the scene at the end of that last interview, at the very end. But um, overall, looks down, looks to the left, pulling things out, out of thin air, tries to recant something that may have never happened. Um, one time closes her eyes while telling her story or giving the interview. Doesn't show the correct emotion when telling a sad story about her friend, Gabby Petito, coming over. Um, tries to force a sad face when she's looking down at the phone at memories of Gabby Petito. Um, switches back and forth from one emotion to the other fairly quick. Doesn't seem like a legitimate reaction to a friend who's passed away, is missing, such and so, such and so. Let's continue. This is a 48-hour interview, so let's get into this. Let's get into this. <laughs> oh, she's hilarious. And she always made me laugh, always. And she's... Easy going. She's like, hey, I love nature. Hey, camping, why not? Oh my god! The tent is just coming in on me. The wind is so bad. Much as I know Gabby and feel like I know Brian, you just never know when it comes to relationships. Uh, FBI agents say that they found what appears to be the human remains of Gabby Petito. Can you describe your daughter to us? She's a beautiful, free spirit, just wanting to take a journey and have fun while she's young. She knew she wanted a van. They uh, worked and saved up for it. They bought the van. They converted it. I love the van. And we supported her on that. All the chocolate mountains. It's a river of chocolate. Anyone that's met the two of them has been like, they seem like such a nice couple. But a lot of couples look nice on Instagram. <laughs> I was... she said, but a lot of couples look nice on Instagram. I'm just looking at that face that she made when she said that. Just... Okay, this made me laugh, that silly old face. <laughs> and the tone of voice she used. Let's continue. I'm concerned with them spending that much time together because when I was last seeing them and everything, they were rocky. I was just shaking your like head. Brian... When I was last seeing them and everything, they were rocky. Why are you shaking your head? Like, I don't know what's going on. No. Why are you shaking your head? No. Why are you shaking your head? No, when you talk. <laughs> Never thought that he was going to be enough. And obviously he sees the beauty in Gabby. She's gorgeous and jealousy can turn into rage two people went on a trip one person returned and that person that returned isn't providing us any information i immediately just where is she where is gabby where is she over and over again i mean i immediately made like a collage of all of was that brian was that Brian Laundry going into the house and them yelling at him, where's Gabby Brian? Was that him? Didn't Dog the Bounty Hunter suspect um, Brian never came home with his family from the camping trip? So Dog the Bounty Hunter said two, three people went into the camping site. Two came out. Like, what? But there goes Brian on camera and they said, where's Brian? What's Gabby Brian? What's, what's Gabby Brian? Yeah, Dog the Bounty Hunter is all over the place with his leads and causing mass confusion is what Dog the Bounty Hunter is doing. But let's continue this video. For photos, for a TikTok, and posted the information. I rushed back to the computer, and lo and behold, Gabby's van was on our footage. Okay, I have a theory. I absolutely think the amazing community on social media came together and found Gabby. One million percent. It was social media. 
the FBI announcing a medical examiner says the body found in Wyoming was indeed that of Gabby Petito, the coroner calling her death a homicide. Please search warrant. FBI agents descended on the Florida home of 23-year-old Brian Laundrie. They were inside for nearly six hours, questioning his parents and collecting evidence. A massive search. More than 50 officers and FBI agents combing a 24,000-acre park near Sarasota, Florida, looking for Brian Laundrie, who hasn't been seen since the 14th, according to his parents, and is a person of interest in the death of Gabby Petito. I've never felt a pain like this. I've always described her as this. Looks down, says, I've never felt a pain like this, and looks back up. light you know she's just she'll do everything to bring the light out in you and if she can't she'll give you some of hers we will get justice for her no matter what and i got this stuff for you for me for you <laughs> And that may be it. That was a short clip from 48 Hours. I'm going to see if I can find the entire interview. So, those two small snippets, we got to see uh, Rose Davis and her acting skills. Just, um, she needs to take more classes and try harder. I don't believe she's hiding anything. I don't believe she's involved in Gabby Petito being missing. But uh, she could show more real emotion than that. You know, maybe cry. Maybe she did cry during this 48-hour broadcast. I haven't seen the entirety of that interview she did. But same old, same old Miss Rose Davis from the previous interview we saw to the small parts in this 48-hour interview we saw. But looking down and, you know, shaking her head just seems not so genuine but let me see if there's anything else left on this video to look at nope. this is a montage yeah so Miss Petito did go to Gabby's Miss Rose Davis did go to Gabby Petito's funeral and um, this was just someone stating, if you look down in the right hand corner, you can see Rose Davis talking to someone and laughing and people had a problem with that. Um, I believe I have another video to talk about that. I believe I have another video to talk about that. Which this really isn't anything noteworthy. The size uh, when Miss Davis posted on her Instagram, she was getting on a plane. She was going to New York to Gabby Petito's memorial. That's the only noteworthy thing about this. Is there anything else? No, no, nothing else. No, no, nothing else. So I'm going to end this video out. Um, I guess this is a great picture by Chris Bott of Daily Mail. Um, this could be a headshot for Gabby Petito's acting career. She could use that as a headshot. You know, she can play some type of character in a teen drama about street gangs or something. Whatever role those type of actors play that she resembles you know this is also another picture of Rose Davis this is supposed to be Rose Davis everybody she's 21 at least in this story she's 21 unless this is her mom let me see unless this is her mom <laughs> but let's just end this out <laughs>
I wish I was on my road Heading to you cause you made me feel I'm home I wish I was talking to you on my road Cause I don't want to steal the love and shine like chrome I wish I wish I was on my road